What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Suppose we are given a 2D board of characters and a word and we are asked to find if the word exists in the grid. The word can be constructed from letters of sequentially adjacent cells, adjacent cells being those horizontally or vertically neighboring. The same cell may not be used more than once. To visualize this, take this grid of characters as an example, alongside the word in front of us. We can clearly see that this word exists in the grid, hence the result returned by our logic should be true. Now, to search for a word in a 2D array, traversal techniques are the first thing that comes to mind, and the most intuitive one for this example is DFS or Depth First Search, which was previously covered in several of our videos. To implement this solution, we will need to loop over every single cell in the 2D matrix, of course after adding a couple of basic preliminary checks. Now, for each cell, we will launch a DFS traversal starting from that character, and if the word was found, we return true, otherwise we return false. One small optimization that can be done here is to check if the first letter of the given word matches the characters stored in the cell we are currently traversing, because if they aren't, then there is no need to even start our traversal logic. Okay, to implement the DFS traversal algorithm, we will start by checking if the current cell is within the bounds of the grid and if it matches the next character of the word. If it does, we mark the current cell as visited to avoid revisiting it and explore all four neighboring cells recursively. If one of these paths leads to the expected result or word, we return true immediately. Otherwise, we backtrack by unmarking the current cell and return false if the word cannot be found from the current cell. The breaking condition for this recursive call would be reaching the end of the word. This is represented by the if statement check we can see in front of us. And that's it. Now, concerning the complexity of this algorithm, it can be divided into three categories. The number of cells traversed, the checks and comparisons done, and the DFS recursive calls. Concerning the number of cells, in the worst case scenario, we will traverse all the cells of the board to find the target word. The maximum number of cells is of course represented by rows times columns. Then, at each step of the DFS, we compare the current character of the board with the corresponding character of the target word and also make sure it is still included within the bounds of the board. These checks take constant time, or O of 1. And finally, for the DFS traversals, the complexity can be represented as 4 to the power L, L being the length of the target word, since for each cell we have 4 different directions to take into consideration recursively in the worst case, up, down, left, and right. So, considering everything we just mentioned, the time complexity can be expressed as O of N times M times 4 to the power L where n is the number of rows, m is the number of columns, and l is the length of the target word. Okay, before ending the video, let's further visualize the algorithm we just implemented with the help of the same example we previously had. We will start by iterating over the cells of the grid, and the first cell contains the letter a. a is different from c, which is the first letter of the given word, hence there is no need to start our iterations from it, and we can proceed to the next cell. The next cell with the letter C matches the target word, hence we will have to explore the different directions spanning from that cell. The letter A does not match the second letter of the word, so we backtrack to the letter C. The same applies to the letter Y, so we backtrack again to the letter C. The last direction we are going to visit is the letter S, which is exactly the letter we are looking for. The same logic is repeated on cells adjacent to the letter S all the way till we reach the last letter of our word. The link to the lead code problem we solved today can be found in the description below. Let me know your thoughts and suggestions for upcoming videos in the comments section. And that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching, take care and I will see you in the next one.